Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Soz, and today we're going to be taking a look at some significant rainfall that is moving towards southeast Queensland at this time, as highlighted by this low pressure swirl of cloud that's uh, located between Brisbane and Charleville as well, right over the top of Toowoomba actually right now. And this is expected to emerge off the coastline and possibly become a weak tropical low between the Queensland coast and New Caledonia, which could be driving some pretty significant waves and wind gusts ashore between Bundaberg right down towards Sydney over the the next week or so. We'll also take a look up in the Gulf of Carpentaria at this swirling cloud mess over here, which we will start off with. Uh, this is tropical low 15U, and it was predicted at one point to become a weak tropical cyclone. However, things changed quite dramatically as the forecast got closer to the time or well, the current time, and this system really flop its chances quite dramatically. Um, and it is now no longer expected to become a tropical cyclone at all. In fact, right now it isn't even a classifiable tropical low, and it's just swirling around in the Gulf of Carpentaria at this time with some very weak wind speeds around the storm center. Still, however, peak wind gusts of around 60 kilometers an hour being recorded at Center Island right now. Mind you, that is in a very exposed location, but the storm is uh, rather impressive looking, I guess, compared to where we were expecting it to be. But it has lost all of its significant thunderstorm convection over the past few hours. So its, it's lifespan is definitely up. And that is because of the high levels of wind shear that it is currently encountering. Well, you can actually see that not only is the storm losing all of its convection, but its center is also vastly displaced from the uh, thunderstorm convection. In fact, the center of the storm is located north of Cape Wessel, in fact, northwest of Cape Wessel, whereas all the thunderstorm activity is located just offshore from Weipa and Arakan on the Cape York Peninsula. So this storm has more than one thing to really worry about, um, and yet that is why it is not going to be anything significant whatsoever. And if you see news articles about a significant cyclone in the Gulf of Carpentaria or tropical on the Gulf of Carpentaria, just know that it is this system, and it is a very, very weak system right now. Currently, though, wind shear doesn't look too unhealthy for the storm. It's only around 30 to 40 kilometers an hour around where the storm center is. It gets a little bit higher as you get into the southern regions of the Gulf of Carpentaria, but it's nothing crazy and it certainly shouldn't be too much of a problem for this tropical uh, cyclone developing or tropical low developing. So I wonder why it has lost all of its convection. Um, it might actually be because of mid-level humidity here. Yeah, it's definitely because of mid-level humidity. So where all the thunderstorm convection is, there's humidity values of around 50% in all 40 to 50 percent and that's actually pretty bad for tropical cyclones in the australian region typically around the world 40 percent is kind of the lowest that you want for a tropical cyclone in order for it to be able to hold its intensity or intensify but in australia that number is bumped up to around 65 or 70 percent i've found just because there's so much more moisture in the atmosphere around the australian tropics um, because of how tropical it is compared to some locations around the Atlantic or in the Western Pacific, especially in the Coral Sea, uh, it is significantly more tropical than um, in other parts of the world. And as such, they like a lot more moisture, these uh, thunderstorms and tropical cyclones do. And there is a big mass of dry air towards the south that's going to be creeping up further north and wrapping itself up properly into this system's convection. So I'd say that the thunderstorms might only have a couple more hours of surviving here before they get completely blasted to smithereens. And it already looks like that is happening at this time. There's absolutely no swirl on this whatsoever. I'm just talking about it because it's a recap on what we've seen over the past couple of days. Um, and if I told you to look for a tropical low in the Gulf of Carpentaria, I mean, you would know where to look. But if you're talking about a tropical low around Australia, you would have no idea because this just looks like a bunch of tropical thunderstorms collapsing in on themselves. And that basically does it for the Gulf of Carpentaria, and probably that will be our final tropical low of season 2024. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on if you're a cyclone lover or hater, uh, it's probably going to be the last significant uh, chance of a tropical cyclone developing. Of course, there might be a slim chance in the Coral Sea or over in Western Australia as you get into June, July, or August, uh, especially in the Coral Sea from a rogue East Coast low, but those chances are very slim year on year, probably only a few percentage points um, that there's something could form, but it's right now that where we're looking at some significant rainfall across southeastern Queensland. And if I do flick it over to the radar imagery, as we said yesterday, some significant rainfall will be moving ashore throughout the course of today. Well, it's actually not moving ashore. It's from this tropical low that's uh, developing right at the top of Roma, actually, uh, where the cursor is right now. And there's a lot of rainfall actually swirling around it. If we take a look at a radar loop of the past 12 hours, that is very evident. There is a lot of moisture in the form of heavy showers being sucked ashore between Grafton up to 
towards the Sunshine Coast and Harvey Bay, but the majority of the rainfall is actually inland and it's from this swirling weather mass through here um, around this tropical low, which actually might be a little bit further towards the coast at this time, north of Gympie or towards the immediate east, uh, west of Gympie rather. Uh, but you can see that there is still a significant amount of moisture being sucked ashore around Lismore, the Gold Coast, Coomera, Brisbane, and up towards Redcliffe as well. And they'll be producing heavy showers throughout the course of today, which could lead to a further 100 millimetres on top of the rainfall that has already fallen to, um, over the past 24 hours. It looks like they actually get quite heavy this evening as this tropical low moves further towards the coastline and then emerges over uh, the ocean around Bundaberg or Gladstone. Um, I mean, tropical low is a big stretch here, but low pressure area, you get what I mean. Um, and it starts to swirl around sort of a common low pressure area located between Queensland and New Caledonia. You can see actually a lot of rainfall will be falling around these South Pacific Islands and there is a slim chance that one of these little lows here, especially this one which is going to be tailing off the back of Vanuatu in actually the next few hours, it currently looks like this. I mean it is a big mess of thunderstorm convection but it doesn't look awful, or its chances don't look awful at least, it doesn't really have any wind observations or anything really going for it at this time, but its chances aren't awful in it actually becoming a tropical cyclone, um, but yeah, probably only around 30 or 40% at this time as it moves south of Fiji, and it would have to achieve cyclone status uh, by Monday afternoon before it he heads into the deeper subtropics, and it will completely die off and piss away its chances down there. In terms of low activity actually located in the uh, Coral Sea right now, the, which is actually a tropical low. It's not designated by the view of meteorology, but because of its tropical nature, it is classifiable as a tropical low. It's emerged from the Solomon Sea, the big thunderstorm ridge that we saw there a couple of days ago. Um, it doesn't look too flash, but you can actually make out a common center of the storm right about here. Um, and you can see winds around the center. They're not very strong at all, but over on the Coral Sea Islands through here, uh, what's this down here? That's Cato Island, 57 kilometers an hour out of the southeast. So you're getting borderline cyclonic winds here on some of these Coral Sea Islands through here. And also some gusty winds now starting on New Caledonia too, associated with some very heavy rainfall as well there, I would imagine at this time. But we're already seeing near cyclonic winds at this time uh, on some of these Coral Sea Island reefs. And they're only gonna pick up throughout the course of today, especially into this afternoon and evening. The winds are gonna get very gusty through here. We're probably gonna be seeing peak wind gusts in excess of 75 or 80 kilometers an hour, maybe up towards 90 kilometers an hour. And that will of course bring the risk of some very big waves. We're probably talking up towards five meters at this time. This is gonna be some very dangerous seas extending from the New South Wales, Queensland border, right up towards at least Mackay, I would say. And that includes all of the little reefs and atolls just offshore from the uh, Queensland coastline on the Great Barrier Reef. There will be some significant wave heights um, emerging and possibly causing some coastal erosion through that area there. But yeah, it doesn't look like a very healthy forecast for people that want to go boating or fishing. Definitely looks like Monday and Tuesday, stay away from the water because it is going to be dangerous. Hopefully though, clearing up by Wednesday and Thursday. In fact, it does actually look like it clears up by Thursday. Uh, some people get an extra long weekend because of the uh, Anzac Day, uh, Memory Day on the 26th, uh, 25th rather. Uh, some people might take Friday off. It looks like boating might be a lot better uh, for some um, areas, especially on their Whit Sundays and up towards of the Coral Sea Islands through here. So you might get a good block of three days of fishing up here. Uh, the waves don't look too high, but then again, three meters, you're probably pushing it in terms of wave heights. And swells will also be quite high up here, probably at around that two to three meter mark. Uh, so fishing as you get up towards Tamsil might be pretty ugly, but around the Whit Sundays doesn't look too bad at all, around two meters of waves and two meters of swell. And winds are probably not going to be too high through there either, around at 15 to 20 knots, gusting 30 knots. So not awful, but again, probably not the best fishing conditions for an extra long weekend for some people. But anyways, that basically wraps it up for the Queensland forecast. Uh, we could take a look very briefly at what's going on over in the South Pacific, and I mean very briefly, because it is a difficult forecast to make. But at this time, I'm not expecting tropical cyclones or tropical lows or anything um, in the cyclone categories. However, I'm expecting low pressure areas that could be bringing a significant amount of rainfall to the Queensland coastline throughout the remainder of today. A further 100 millimetres for areas around Brisbane, the Gold Coast, especially as you get inland towards the Blue Mountains. Um, widespread totals around 50 millimetres can be expected around the Brisbane metro and down towards the Gold, Gold Coast, and even as far north up towards Harvey Bay and Bundaberg as well. Uh, some significant rainfall across New Caledonia and Fiji uh, and Vanuatu as well with the passage of these tropical lows or low pressure systems really um, not expecting them to come into tropical cyclone status uh, though, however, 
Anyways, we can take a look at weather around the nation right now. It's actually been a pretty cool start for the southwest corner of Western Australia this morning. Cooler than most areas around Australia. In fact, we've got minimum temperatures around at 3 to 5 degrees Celsius. In fact, I was down in Beverly yesterday morning after I made the forecast update for the morning. Um, and it was 3 degrees. Or my car thermometer said that it was 3 degrees. And it was bloody cold, let me tell you. The coldest that I've felt since probably last September. So winter certainly is coming. I feel like I say it every single update. But let me tell you, those cooler conditions and hopefully wetter conditions are coming as well. For farmers in the West Australian region, don't take my word for it, of course, just make sure that you're using your best judgment and also the Bureau of Meteorology's forecast as well. But if I'm to predict a start for the rainfall this season, I'm probably going to be saying the first fronts will start crossing mid-May into late May, but the first consistent, really heavy rainfall will probably be starting around June. It's going to be a late start to winter, but I do believe when she comes, she will be violent. You can also watch the winter forecast it should be up around here. Um, make sure you give that a good watch. It was a great video. A lot of researching went into that and also a lot of judgment from the Bureau of Meteorology and myself too, in interpreting weather models as well. It also looks like some cold conditions now starting to take hold for Tasmania and areas around there. Some steady rainfall starting to move ashore through there. Um, at this time, it looks like it could be a little bit of a drizzly day by the looks of things. In fact, over the coming few days, associated with the high pressure system offshore from New South Wales before a cold front hits. And we also should be talking about some rainfall that was on the forecast for the sort of five to 10 day forecast period, but that's since kind of been dropped for the New South Wales coastline. There's nothing really on the forecast there anymore. And it's kind of the weather event that we're seeing right now merged into what we could have been seeing Monday and Tuesday, but it looks like they've kind of all merged into Saturday and Sunday. And as a result, we're not seeing the rainfall over the course of this week there. But yeah, I mean, it really looks like we're moving into this dry winter phase this time around the nation. No major city apart from Brisbane expecting significant rainfall over the next 10 days. In fact, Darwin expecting nothing, Perth, nothing, Adelaide, basically nothing, Melbourne, Hobart, Sydney themselves might get five or 10 millimetres, same with Canberra. Brisbane is kind of the only outlier right now, still getting those tropical uh, rainfall or rain that we're seeing today over the course of today. Yet yeah, it's looking high and dry across the nation, cool and dry across the south and still warm and dry up in the north as the wet season really does wrap itself up. Of course, if you've got any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section down below if you'd like me to take a look at a certain location's forecast, especially over the next month as we head into this boring changeover phase where I'm not going to have much to talk about. I really don't want to go to once every two day updates. I mean, I love catching up with everyone on the weather and every single day. It's really nice waking up early in the morning to get the best weather forecast out. And I do like it because there's no one else doing it around Australia. And I'm glad that I am the one doing it. Um, but to keep these videos interesting and to keep them more than like two or three minutes long, I would love to have your input and your uh, location that we give an in-depth forecast to because I don't mind taking a look at a country town for five minutes and really giving an in-depth breakdown of the forecast through there. I feel like it could be fun um, and also good practice as well. I mean, every day the forecast models are getting updates, it seems. I mean, Windy got a nice update last night where the borders uh, are now very bright and very obvious by the looks of things. And you can see that with the infrared satellite imagery, which everyone seems to be complaining about about how the borders are very vague and hard to see. I feel like they're still very vague and hard to see, but they do look about 20% better now. So that is some great news from Windy. But yeah, just if you've got any comments or questions, leave them down there. I love reading all of them. And I'm going to try and get back to all of them throughout the course of today as well. Inching closer to 14,000 subscribers as well. I believe we're only 80 away. So if you want to be the last 80 to 14,000, then please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. Subscribe to the second channel. There's nothing going on over there right now, however. Uh, but definitely in the next couple of months when things start to pipe up in the Western Pacific, which is north of Australia, we can get some massive typhoons up there and they are fun to look at. Let me tell you, you don't want to miss it. But yeah, that's basically all from me. Thank you so much for your company this morning and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.